Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday Bible study. This week, we're going to pick up on our first study in Philemon on the verses 1 through 3. And, you know, as, as a start, as we look at our world, our world seems to be coming unglued. And in our world, forgiveness is not viewed as a critical virtue today. In fact, it's really frowned upon, I think, in many ways. But for the Christian, it is one of the paramount virtues. And I think that's because as Christ has forgiven us, we are to forgive others as we model Him before our world. Listen to Ephesians 4.32. It says, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God and Christ forgave you. And listen to Colossians 3.13. Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Amen. You know, failure to forgive, I think, causes four major issues in us. First, failure to forgive, it imprisons us in our past. It keeps our past alive. And the troubles of the past seem to revisit us time and time again because we fail to forgive. And then number two, unforgiveness produces bitterness in us, infecting our soul. Listen to Hebrews 12, 15. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. What a great word from the writer of Hebrews. And then number three, I think unforgiveness gives Satan a foothold in our lives. It just opens the door to all kinds of other trouble for us. Listen to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 through 11. Anyone whom you forgive, I also forgive. Indeed, what I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, has been for your sake in the presence of Christ so that we would not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. Amen. And then number four, I think unforgiveness short circuits our fellowship with God. Matthew 6, verses 14 through 15 says this, For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespass, Neither will your father forgive your trespass. What stern words from Jesus. And I think he gives those stern words because if we don't understand his forgiveness, then, and we're unwilling to forgive others, that means that we really don't get Jesus. We really don't have a relationship with him. Now listen to what Paul says in these opening verses, verses 1 through 3. Paul says this, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved fellow worker, and Apphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. You notice as Paul begins this short letter, he begins his letter with his name, a customary practice of, ancient, of the ancient world. But seeing Paul's name, it must have caused Philemon to stop and to say, uh-oh, I've got a letter from a very important man before me, so I should take notice of what Paul is about to say, because Paul was an absolute giant in the early church. And then Paul goes on and he calls himself as a prisoner of Jesus Christ. You know, this is the only time in all of Paul's writings that he uses this imagery stressing that he and Philemon are slaves of Jesus. Interesting, as he begins this letter, as he deals with the issue of a runaway slave. And the implication, I think, for, for Philemon is that, listen, if I can stand being Christ's prisoner here in Rome, you can stand for Christ where you are as well. And then notice next that Paul mentions Timothy as well, who was with him as he wrote. Paul calls him our brother, implying that they both knew each other. They probably met in Ephesus when Paul and Timothy were there together. 
Now remember that Paul would one day hand the reins of his ministry over to Timothy. So this was an important little introduction and reminder to Philemon that this man is important to me. So listen to him and help him along. And Paul expresses his love to Philemon by calling him our fellow beloved worker. Now the word beloved comes from the word agape, describing his, him as a man who was selfless and sacrificial in his love for the church that met in his home. And the word fellow worker comes from a word called sunergos, and it was used to describe someone who would work side by side with Paul in ministry. So Philemon was a very important man. He was a man who lived his faith and helped Paul in ministry. And this letter is also addressed to Apphia, and we think that's most likely Philemon's wife, and Archippus, who is described as a fellow soldier, once again showing that this man himself was also very active in ministry and very important in ministry. And then Paul greets the church in Philemon's house. You know, it was very common for the early church to meet in homes. Church buildings, in fact, were not really around until about the third century. In fact, the oldest known church building has been found at Dura Europas on the banks of the Euphrates River in the Syrian desert. It was a house with two rooms and a platform. That's all it was. It was small, but it was still a church. And the implication is that Paul wants Apphia and Archippus and the church in Philemon's home to receive, to receive the same message on forgiveness that he's given to Philemon. And then Paul ends the opening with his standard greeting that's found in all 13 of his letters. He says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace is the means of salvation and peace is the result from the Father and the Son as the source of the deity who, are, and who serve as uh, the source of this grace and forgiveness. It's an important, uh, important point for the early church to note. He also points out that Christ is God by equating Him and the Father together. It's an important little note that he puts into the letter. Now here are three questions for you. First, have you ever thought of yourself as a prisoner of Jesus Christ? What are, your, what are the images that come to your mind as you think about that imagery for yourself? And then number two, Paul calls Philemon a fellow worker. What are the implications for us as fellow workers with our brothers and sisters in Christ? And then number three, Paul calls Archippus a fellow soldier. Again, what is this imagery? What does it come to your mind? And what are the battles that we're facing as Christians as fellow soldiers for Jesus Christ. So I hope you've enjoyed this short, short study, and I hope we can see you at our worship service on Saturday night. We meet at 6.30 p.m. at Victory Life Church. It's located at 155 Northwest 112th Avenue in Plantation, Florida. It would be wonderful to have you with us. We're a great group of folks. You'll have a lot of fun, and I hope you have a wonderful week. We'll see you Saturday. Thanks.